This is an overview of the Seawood PV150 solar tester. The purpose of the solar tester is to quickly show you the open circuit voltage, short circuit current and insulation resistance of a PV string. It pairs with the irradiance meter over here so that you can have the irradiance meter outside wirelessly transmitting and this inside next to the inverter where you're working. Every time you turn on the irradiance meter, you have to tell it that you want to transmit. And once you've told it you want to transmit, it will come up with a little flashing triangle symbol here and the irradiance will appear in the display up here. If you don't have the irradiance meter <coughs> connected, then the top line of the uh, display will read the voltage measured between these two four millimeter terminals up here. Whilst this can measure insulation resistance, it will only measure insulation resistance as part of its auto test sequence. So if it doesn't detect a string, then it won't perform an insulation resistance test. So at the moment we've got zero input voltage. You cannot use it to perform a test, which means you cannot use it to test the insulation resistance of some cables or anything that's deactivated. In order to perform a test, we have to simulate some sort of string. So I put my tester on over here. This is currently outputting 528 volts. This is reading it as 529. But now it thinks we're connected to a string. So we can now actually run a test. Um, normally I would run it at 1000 volts. Uh, 500 volts for me is completely irrelevant because most strings run at seven or 800 um, or sometimes more than that. When it runs through a test, um, what it's doing is shorting out the two inputs. So these two cables come down to MC4 connectors here and it's measuring the insulation resistance between this short circuited and the red terminal up here, which you will connect to ground. So when you run the test, it short circuits these, measures the current, and then performs an IR test between this short circuited and that. And you'll see on this one that the voltage reading will drop to approximately zero because these two get shorted. So perform the test, voltage drops to zero because this can't output much current, um, short circuit current is listed as zero. The frustration of this is that it will only perform the tests that it wants to perform in the order it wants to perform them. The strength of this is that it's really, really quick. You can plug in a string, hit the test button and away you go. In practice, I will tend to have the earth clamp um, for measuring the IR to this, um, to something grounded and leave that connected. And then I can just quickly pull the MC4s out, shove the next one in, click test and away we go. I'll now do a quick demonstration of what you do if you haven't got one of these. This doesn't do anything particularly magical, um, so it can be replicated very easily with some other much um, more basic equipment. What I have here is a setup that will perform exactly the same tests as the previous tester, but rather more cheaply. This is a DC isolator. It's important it's a DC isolator, they're not the same as AC isolators. AC isolators rely on the fact that there's a zero crossing point, which doesn't happen on a DC system. So we connect the array to the two MC4 connectors here with the isolator in the off position. We can then measure the voltage across the isolator. 
using a voltmeter. We then short circuit the array. And at this point, we can then connect an insulation resistance tester to measure between the short circuited array and ground. So this is this lead here is going to what I'm calling the short circuited array, and this one would be connected to ground. So in this case, we'd get an insulation resistance of two mega ohms to ground. And at this point, we would also be measuring the short circuit current of the array. So with the isolator off, we can measure the open circuit voltage. With the isolator on, we can measure the insulation resistance using an insulation resistance tester and the short circuit current. I would choose to use a clamp meter for measuring the current. It's good because it's non-invasive. It's also good because it's safe. In principle, you could use a regular multimeter to measure the short circuit current. A lot of multimeters have a 10 amp range. A lot of multimeters, particularly the better ones, will say you can use the 10 amp range at 20 amps for a short period. That's absolutely fine. I'm not particularly comfortable doing that myself. What I would say is if you are going to use the current range on your multimeter, make sure it has properly rated high voltage, high current fuses. Something like this allegedly has a thousand volt rating, cat three thousand volts, same as this. It can also allegedly measure 10 amps. However, the fuse on the 10 amp range is only a 250 volt small glass fuse. And I would have absolutely no confidence that if that blew, it wouldn't arc. And I'm not about to experiment with having a 10 kilowatt arc welder inside a small plastic box in my hand. So what we have here is a demonstration of how to test whether the insulation resistance functions of the PV tester is actually working. Now bear in mind I said before that we can't run a test unless it thinks there's a panel connected. So I've got my Bryman meter here again to simulate a string. It's not my main insulation resistance tester, but it is by far and away the easiest one to, to use. So at the moment, it's not reading anything, can't read, can't read any values. I've got my checkbox here connected up to the terminal here, the red terminal, connected to the two mega ohm input. The negative is coming round here. It's teed into the same line as the negative side of the tester and into the input up here, the positive out of the Bryman into here. So if I start up the Bryman, it's now putting 528 volts out. It's reading 528 volts here. You can see also it's reading 209 volts. The 209 volts is a bit of a spurious reading. It's in principle the voltage between the two four millimeter terminals up here that are currently off the top of the screen. However, obviously we haven't got anything plugged into the second one. It's literally just there. So this 200 and something volts that we now can't see because it's turned off, this tester loves turning off. It has auto power off set to one minute. You can set it to longer than that. Um, the reason I haven't done that is because Actually turning this off is a bit of a faff, so it's easier to just let it auto power off itself. A lot of the time when you try and turn it off, it just turns itself back on again. Um, so it says off, except it isn't. Um, you have to actually be a bit more patient with it. So I've just left it to auto power off. Anyway, the 200 and something volts at the top here is just because of leakage between this side and that side. It's not actually signifying anything. So we've got the Bryman going. That means that this thinks there's a string test connected to it, which means we can actually then run a test. 
click auto with any luck that'll come up with two mega ohms you can't read that there we go 2.01 and equally if we connect it to the 0 0.5 0.5 it'll say it's a fail um and the 200 full scale of this is 199 so this should now be off scale high which it is um this button here switches between the voltages that you're testing at it defaults to 500 which is completely pointless the only one i ever use is a thousand Seawood will tell you that this will also measure the DC power of a string or array. It'll measure various voltages and all that sort of thing. In practice, I don't use it for any of that because it's a massive faff. Um, so you can connect a current clamp into here and then voltage probes into there. Um, I don't use that feature because it's much easier to just use a regular clamp meter. That's the one I have measures ac and dc power the reason it's important to be able to measure power and not just current is it's very useful to know whether you are importing or exporting and if you can measure power and power factor then you know 